Hello everybody and welcome to Darkest Dungeon. This is a series that I've been wanting to bring back to the channel for a really long time now and those of you that have been watching my Isaac episodes and Gungeon episodes will have heard me talking about this series a lot because this is quite a different series than what we normally do on our channel. Essentially with this game, for one, it's a lot more difficult than things we normally play. There's a lot of aspects of this game that can really be quite brutal, mainly the fact that you have your heroes, your characters, but they're expendable. They can and will die, and once they're dead, they're dead forever. And also with this series, because of that fact, we're going to be taking it to the next level and having a lot more viewer interaction. Basically, you guys out there are going to be writing the backstories and diary entries of the characters that we have within our hamlet, within our cursed estate, as it's called. Um, you guys are going to build up stories for them, build up relationships, and I've got to try my best to keep those people alive. Now, we already have a good few people in the Discord that are writing characters, writing backstories. Um, we've got a few prepared for this episode, but if you guys want to get involved, you can either leave your backstories and diaries in the comments of this video, or please do join the Discord where you can discuss with the other writers, and we're going to be building out a sort of Google Doc that has all the information of all the characters so you can review it. Uh, and it's going to be a really exciting series. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of view interaction and it's going to be kind of stressful because we are playing modded and we are playing with quite a lot of mods. Now, the mods that we have don't really change the core gameplay loop of the game, but they do make it more difficult in certain aspects, mainly in adding modded enemies um, and changing a few things here and there around the hamlet. Uh, for those of you that don't know Darkest Dungeon at all, if maybe this is a new game to you, I will try and introduce things as we go through them um, and sort of give you kind of an introduction so please do let me know down in the comments if you're new to this game and if you want more tutorializing as we walk through that'd be really helpful to know but either way we're going to jump into our cursed state watch the first cutscene, and then we're going to get into our first character backstories so let's take a look and jump on in along the old road. It winds with a troubling serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside, leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient pitted cobbles of the old road, and on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. Quite a few of those. <laughs> Quite a few damnably transcendent foes. Steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell. But in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. So yeah, for those of you that don't know this game very well, essentially, we are heading to the Darkest Dungeon, to this estate that is run by the guy that is uh, narrating this game. He essentially uncovered this underworld underneath his, his massive estate and spent all of his time and resources opening and researching its secrets, and in doing that, he unleashed something terrible. And now people expedition to this cursed estate in order to try and rid it of evil and find out its secrets. So we're going to be heading onto the old road here, and you always start off with the same two characters. We start off with Dismas, the Highwayman, and Renault, the Crusader. So we're going to get into their backstories now. They've already been written by a few people. Uh, this first one here is by Strafe, and this is for Dismas. Oh, Dismas, poor Dismas. Where had he gone so horribly wrong in his life? He'd been of decent wealth growing up, but that hadn't fulfilled him. A slight nagging always pulled at his mind. Just a bit more gold. They won't miss a few coins. It had, um, it whispered. After his parents passed on, he had uh, been driven to a life of gambling and drinking as a way to cope. How poor of an idea that had been. One late autumn night, drunk and on a bad streak, Dismas did something that would tear his very soul asunder. He found a small carriage on a cobbled road. Thinking only of wealth, he shot twice into the carriage. If only he'd never done that. Inside lay the corpses of a young mother and her child. Something hit Dismas's emotions like a punch. 
He staggered, weak from overwhelming sorrow. It shouldn't have been like this. He never meant to kill them. Afraid and alone, Dismas ran into the woods. From that day forward, he lived a life of crime. Every night he saw the woman's face when he slept, and so Dismas thought about his sins as he walked onto an old dirt road with a broken crusader in pursuit of redemption. So that's a fantastic backstory there. You can see the tone that we're sort of setting here. Um, and we're going to go into the other one here, which is our crusader. Um, this is Renald. All his life, Renald was shunned for the way he looked. He could never see what people meant, comparing him to all sorts of horrible monsters. He was a kind soul, even with everyone's needless, needlessness harshness. He went searching far and wide for people who would accept him, or at least help him solve his problem, or at the very least find out what was wrong with him. Until he met a woman, a very peculiar woman. When Renault found her, he thought she was talking um, to. He thought he was talking to a ghost. Until she turned to him, I've heard about all your challenges, all your pain and misery, um, all of which you didn't deserve. I have a solution for you, but you might not like it. But it's the only thing I can think of. The woman said. Then Renault responded. There is nothing, um, th there is not a thing that can make me feel more pain than what I've felt so far. What is your plan? She replies, become a crusader, a warrior of the light. People will think you a hero, and for once they'd be right to call a crusader that. I'll meet you here in the morning. And so Renault began his training to be a crusader. It was no doubt tough and stressful, but he knew it would be worth it. It had to be. Two amazing backstories for two amazing characters here. Uh, we do actually have a different skin for him here. Uh, we can change the skins of our characters. Of course, these two are already named. They're already named this to start with, but other characters will be changing. I'm going to go as this skin here. I really like this one. And then for the Crusader... People, by the way, you can choose what skin or colour you'd like to use. I do have a few modded ones installed. Um, I really like this one. The, uh, this one's the Dark Souls one. So, we start off on the old road... Here is the crashed cart that, unfortunately, have we have been exited from. And now, path. we've got to make yeah, our way. Just so essentially, just for those of you that don't know this game too well, we have this map here, and we can click on these boxes here to travel between the rooms. Each tile of these can have um, treasure or enemies, and we've got to deal with them. And then here, we've got our different skills that we can use. Um, they tell you what position you can use it from and what enemies you can hit from that position. All fights have four positions to work with. Um, and so Dismas here, the High Women, has some long-range attacks and the Crusader's more close range. So we'll see what we can do with this. Let's move along forward. And also there you saw stress. That's, that's bad. That's not good. Um, already taken a little bit of damage there. But this guy should be very easy to dispatch. We should be able to kill him pretty quickly. There you go. Not a problem. But you saw we got surprised there, which moved our party around and swapped these two um, around. But now we can swap them back. But yeah, you saw that we received some stress there. That is going to be something that you have to deal with throughout the entirety of this game. Essentially, characters can become stressed based on certain actions. Certain enemies will inflict um, stress. Certain actions will inflict stress. And... With that stress becomes issues. Once you hit 100 stress, you can become afflicted or virtuous, which is essentially like a, a check for if you become mad or if the stress... I don't know, the virtue is very strange. It's kind of like if the stress is good for you sort of thing. Oh, that's an unfortunate dodge there. Um, But certainly, certainly it can cause some issues for us. And then if you hit 200 stress, your character will have a heart attack. Once your character's HP hits zero, they hit death's door, which essentially means that any next hit to them could be a killing blow. They do have a chance to resist a death's blow, but that chance is not always guaranteed. This is going to be a, a pretty tough fight to start here. Um, it's not crazy difficult, but this isn't exactly an easy dude. I'm going to try and stun this guy. Yes, there you go. That saves us some time. Basically, stunning an enemy there will uh, pass their turn, so next turn they're not going to be able to act. And as you can see here, this guy's debuffing us with dodge, so... Oh, really? Another miss? Basically, the more, the more dodge we have minus, the less chance we have of dodging their attacks, which obviously creates issues in itself. Our health is getting rather low here, and on this road we have no way of healing, but a critical there is very, very nice. 
Critical damage, of course, just means we deal a lot higher damage. There's actually a lot more statistics in this game uh, that you can look at and see how things work. So, for example, when I used the stunning blow there, um, you can take a look at the enemy and see uh, their statistics. So, the 50% chance to resist a stun. We can see that we have an 85% chance to hit, a 12.5% chance to crit, and then we can deal 5 to 9 damage, and the enemy only has 2 HP. So, we'll go in for a slice there. We finish that off. We grab the rest of our loot, and that is the first quest complete. So now we can return to the hamlet, and this is our cursed estate. So here we get a few rewards. We get some money for doing that. We bring back everything that we brought in with us, and we collect some heirlooms as well. Rather nice. And then we can take a little look. So... These are quirks. Characters can gain positive and negative quirks. Um meaning that they can act out or they just have certain buffs or debuffs and with dismas here we got artistic which is less stress but we find inspiration in the strangest of places which means that he'll act outside of our control sometimes not good and then giant slayer extra accuracy and crit against size two basically bigger enemies like that big guy we just fought there are gonna fall a little bit faster with dismas especially considering that crit Welcome chance home. Such as it is. We got the graveyard here. This is where all our dead heroes will show up. Corrupted lands. We have they are yours now. the ancestors' mem um, to them. memories or whatever it is. This here is going to show us like we we're, we're able to Most see our quests. And we're also able to see in the our um, cutscenes. But this is where we bring on new people. We have time, an occultist and an arbalist to start out. Failings. To start out our first journey here. So we can also upgrade things men, here. Soldiers and outlaws. Fools and corpses. The dude does All like to talk a lot. So. <laughs> the road is clear. But yeah, we're in the Tales Cursed Estate here. So there's a lot of different buildings here we have to unlock and utilize. Um, and different heroes to bring on board. We do have backstories ready and waiting for both our occultist and our arbalist. These two... Um, are going to be pretty interesting classes for us, to be honest. We do start with the healing there. And we do start with the healing there. That's really good. Um, we can bring on more heroes, but I want to stagger it a little bit and not bring on too many people in one go. Uh, what we will do is we'll upgrade this so we receive more heroes. Basically means we have a higher chance of getting um, better people. We can use this. And then we can embark onto our first real mission, which will be like our tutorial quest. Uh, but let's take a look at what we've got so far. So, with Renold here, we have uh, the Warrior of Light, which is extra damage above certain Torchlight. That's another thing we have to fight with, keeping our Torch levels up. We uh, we have Godfearing and Kleptomaniac. This guy can steal things from us, which is a little unfortunate. And then, of course, we get Hard Noggin, Quick Reflexes, Giant Slayer. Known Cheat, he can't gamble. That fits into his backstory, as we read. Um, and then... Uh, we have the artistic as well, which could be problematic. For our new guys, we have extra debuff chance, which is pretty good because this guy does have a good few debuffs. And then obsessed with the paranormal. That means he might act out on certain curios, which are uh, essentially the treasures. And then here we have camping skill unlock isn't terrible. Easily stressed out in wide open areas. That's interesting. And then um, a little bit extra stress when we're low on HP. Okay, these are interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the recording real quick and then name our characters that we can get back into the uh, backstories of these guys. Okay, first up here we've, we have Arashad, our occultist. As I stepped out of that thrice damned rickety wagon, I breathed into the familiar scent of corruption. The same glances and hushed curses greet me shortly after. They see the cosmic glint in my eyes and respond with revulsion, as I should have. Perhaps this rotten hamlet has the answers I seek to wreak myself of this gift. So he's going to be on a quest to find out his occultist nature and some of the powers that he's inquired, that he's received. And then here we have Rose. Um, so this is Rose, our arbalist. She thought it was a pretty name. A flower known best for its representation of love and passion with be beautiful red shades to match. Others thought she was a pretty lady, and they were not wrong, but it was not something she took any care to maintain or even took advantage of. It was not a pretty life, regardless of what anyone thought. Adventuring, monster hunting, it sounded terrifying to some and exciting to others. 
In all cases, people saw thrilling hunts, heroic battles, and glorious victory, marching home to fame and fortune, the fruits of most glamorous labor. Sometimes some would be true, but rarely. They called it a duty for a reason. It was something that needed to be done, and it was not easy. The Hunters Guild worked hard to uphold their duty, but many towns had already been lost to incursions of the banditry and monstrous blight, and their resources only dwindled. Not all Hunters did battle, most were support. Foragers, craftsmen, scholars and the like. They would all arrive as they were needed. She was an expeditionary, a scout to assess the situation and determine if the Guild's help is needed and to what degree, and a warrior to fight and protect if necessary. She could already tell just during the ride here that this place was in dire need. So she's definitely going to be helping out a lot. But now we're going to go into our first actual adventure here. As you can see, we have multiple different areas here. We're going to have to level these areas up in order to reach the darkest dungeon. We do also have a modded area called the Sunward Isles, which we'll be getting into eventually. Um, I think just to start here, we're going to give this guy our 10% max HP trinket, because why not? Actually, I probably ought to give it to a guy that's got lower max HP, to be honest. Um, I know it's only 10%, but two extra HP could be could be huge for that guy. We don't, we don't know. And from this, we'll get uh, the move stone as well as some money. Uh, now we head to the provision screen. This is where we're going to buy everything that we need to go out on an adventure. So we don't need to buy a ton here. Um, I'm going to take eight food, um, two of those... I don't think we need any anti-venom or bandages. I don't know what we need. Uh, I'll take two of them. I'll take one of them. And we'll take eight torches. Okay, we don't have a ton to go with there, but we don't need a lot for this first quest. I don't think we need any anti-venom or medical herbs. They can be used to, like, take poison off of us or heal debuffs. But they can also be used to uh, cure us. Um, which are things that can gain us loot. So we'll be able to use certain ones of them to get different types of loot. Anyways, let's embark into the ruins. And essentially when we have diary entries coming in each week for these characters that we're building, this is where we'll read over them. This is where we'll um, get into their diary entries and see how people progress each week in the, the loading screen between our missions. But yeah, I'm really excited to get into this and see how it goes. Hopefully this mission should be pretty straightforward. It shouldn't have any issues really. Um, these two do start with extra stress because they're coming in to a level 1 mission at level 0. Meaning they do take on a little bit more stress. Uh, which is slightly problematic. And we can see our light level here. It actually tells you the buffs that you get um, when you're at certain light. We want to keep our light above 75 because we get that 10% damage. But also we have higher chance to surprise monsters. We have better dodge. Lower chance of that happening. Because that is dreadful. That is absolutely awful, because now our Crusader here, who's all the way at the back, can't really do anything. Um, I was hoping that I'd maybe kill him, but oh well. Um, so we'll move you back to... Yeah, so our Crusader got pushed all the way to the back there. It's a very low chance for surprise to happen, but when it does happen, it's pretty devastating. Because if a melee character gets bumped all the way to the back, they can't do anything until they're moved, and it takes a turn to move people too. Um, we'll just take this guy out. Um, lower his damage a little bit. We also got a crit there. Very nice. Crits are going to heal stress as well, which is really good. Um, let's just heal people up a little bit here. Make sure people are topped off. Bump in the night. Nothing terrible here. And then he's got to move because he literally can only attack from the first two spots. So he wasn't super useful back there. So surprises really can be pretty devastating. We've got to be very worried about those. We can reorder our party after a battle as well, which is nice. And this is unlocked, so we'll hop straight in there and see what we can get. An extra shovel, a little bit of money. Not too bad. Not too bad. And this is where we use shovels Even here. We can use those to seems bent on destroy passage. stone um, that may be in front of us. If we don't have a shovel for that, we, we have to dig with our hands. And that deals damage to us and causes stress. And now this is our first stress dealer. Back enemies, enemies that are, uh, that are at the back, often deal stress, and this is one of them. These people need to be killed as soon as possible. So one thing we can do here is use um, the demon's pull 
to pull this character to the front. Now, the, the, the enemy does have move resist, so it's, there's a potential chance that the pull doesn't work. But um, this time we got lucky and we were able to kill this enemy before it acted. With us surprising the enemy, we get to, in our entire crew gets to act before any of them get to act. Which is really, really nice. We do have our first rather large hit on, um, on our occultist here. So what we can do is we can heal him there like that. That'll buff 20% additional healing. And we're not gonna... Actually, we can't... We can we can kill that guy, so we're not gonna kill him yet. We're gonna delay a little bit in order to heal ourselves up. Um, Arashad, there you go. Healed for 14. Lovely. Getting back to full health. And that dodge helps a hell of a lot. There you go. We can't bleed these guys because, of course, it's a skeleton. You're not gonna be able to bleed a skeleton. So no harm in trying. This character is a little iffy because we can only hit the back three. So this enemy at the front, we legitimately cannot hit. Um, which certainly causes problems. Lower this guy's damage a little bit. It's only 10%, so it won't be too much, but... Stops us taking too much damage. There you go. A little bit more gold. Move across into our next room. But yeah, my mod list, by the way, will be in the description of this video. I have it all set out in a collection that you guys can take a look at. Um, you guys can copy. Oh. We got a key there and some busts, but he is kleptomaniac, so he stole them. Meaning we don't get them at all. A little bit annoying when that happens. There is a way for us to remo remove negative quirks and stuff. Wow, we are getting a lot of surprises here. This is very good. Being able to act like this all the time. With only 10% move resist. Oh, failed the 10% and the dodge as well. That was unfortunate. That really didn't go too well. Um, try and kill this guy in one hit. Unfortunately, not quite. And here's our first bout of stress. 23 additional stress. That's up to 46 now. So that's a lot. That's a lot and a lot. And there's a crit on us, which does stress people out. Also, of course, deals more damage and increases the chance of things like bleeder caring. Not great. Um, let's go for a heal on you. Go up to full. This heal is very risky, by the way. It can it, it can be a very, very big range on what it heals for. It can be between 1 and 13. But uh, it can also apply bleed. So it's, it's a bit of a risk. It's a bit of a gamble. We are losing quite a lot of health here. We'll keep on going with the uh, the healing. You go down. Lovely. Give them no quarter. Please don't bleed me again. Oh, that dodge is lovely. Hopefully we get a bleed on him with this. We did indeed. Bleed is just damage over, over time. And there's another heal for 11. No bleed as well. That's really nice. And these two are, are going to be our main healers for a little while here. I'm actually taken out. Onslaught. Here's a curio here. I do have a mod that shows you what is required to open them. Um, so just just because it's easy to forget, but I, I do technically know them. I've played this game a lot before. So there we go. We got quite a lot there. Good about a uh, good amount of extra gold and stuff. Um, move this way. So one good thing here is we have a trap on the map here. We'll be able to see it right here. If you scout, which we just did there, which is essentially revealing some of the map, it shows you where the uh, traps are. And then we can actually disarm this with these characters. This guy's 90%, so we disarm. And that gives us a stress heal. So it's very, very nice to do that, actually. There's actually another one coming up just down here that we can go for. Um, so I'm going to do that as well. There you go. Cleared all of his stress. And we'll take out whatever this battle is here. So th for this quest, we only have to explore 90% of rooms. But I'm uh, exploring a few extra just to try and get us some more uh, some more loot. We want to try and get as much money as we can early on. So I'm going to be trying to do that. We'll take this guy out. Come on, one hit kill. Ah, we could roll 7 to 13. They have 10 health. We could mark this enemy in the back here, which would lower his dodge, although he doesn't have a lot. And then it would make this deal 50% more damage and do 9% more crit. But honestly, I think we'll do. I think we're better off just spending the turns dealing damage. It's only really later on in the game, or like a little bit down the line, that you need to really worry about buffs and debuffs. I think going for straight damage is not a bad tactic early on. Good dodge. 
heal of nine there. We're getting pretty lucky with the heals. Unfortunately, we did finally apply a bleed there. I knew it was coming at some point. There's a kill. Lovely. Take these guys out. We can actually use Zealous Axe's accusation here to kill both at once. Very, very nice. A little bit of damage spread amongst two of them. Now here, we can select a hero and use Holy Water to gain a divine benefit, which was a heal, but also a pretty hefty stress heal, which is the more important thing of the two there. Um, we could use bandages to get rid of that bleed, but it's so minor, I'm not going to worry about it. And in traveling back through hallways we've already been through, we uh, take on a little bit less stress, which is really, really nice. And we move through and we see what's in here. We did get a trinket, nice. Um, plus six dodge and minus one speed if in position one. This guy already has low speed, so that's actually really nice to have for this guy. Because um, six dodge is, is really, really good. This guy only starts with a base of, I think, um, base of five. So that's, that's more than doubling his base dodge, which is really, really good. There's our food check there. We do have quite a lot of food with us uh, that we don't really need. So what we can do is... Um, by the way, when your quest completes, you can either return straight to Hamlet or continue. We're going to continue to this last room. We do have the shovels available to do it. But yeah, what we can do with that food is we can um, get through here. And because we're not going to need it for any more food checks, we can actually eat a little bit of it on each character to get them back to full health. It's really, really useful if you carry extra food for that reason. Of course, everything does cost that you bring with you, so you have to manage your, uh, your costs. This guy needs to die immediately. Unfortunately, he went for the most stressed character. This guy does a lot of stress damage. Um, so our occultist here is already taking a lot of stress. Rose in the back line should be able to finish it. Unfortunately, not as much damage as I was hoping for. One hit kill. Ah, oh, come on. Um, we don't really have a good way of stress healing. Later down the line, we do get heroes that have the ability to heal stress. There you go. That just finishes you off. Uh, but for right now, we don't have anything that can heal stress, apart from finding curios or getting crits. They're the main ways that we can de-stress at the moment. But there's not much we can do to, to properly influence that. Did move him forward, which for one, clears out the bodies. Bodies, of course, as you saw, can kind of get in the way. But also, bringing a ranger to the front is really good because it limits what attacks they can perform. Um, some, some of their attacks can only be done from the back line. Um... And if we pull them forward, it means that they can't do them, which makes them less threatening. Okay, let's go for this. Arashad is taking quite a beating at the moment, I'll be honest. But, honestly, Dismas has been an absolute beast, and there's the heal for one. And bleed. <laughs> You've done yourself a good service there, my dude. Very well done. But there you go, it's fine. We finished this out cleared that and we got another trinket wow Remind we got pretty lucky with our trinkets here some of these are class specific and insidious which means that we can't use them on any class but that's still pretty good and then we can go over here and end our quest and return back to the hamlet with quite a lot of loot we collected a good amount of treasure there three thousand a good amount of um heirlooms which can be spent to upgrade our buildings and we get the sunwood explorer for extra scouting chance Obsessed with the paranormal and scouting in the Hamlet. I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, normally, there's not many missions in the Hamlet. That may be for down the line. Interesting. The tents are pitched. Banners Interesting. Fly, and the corpse wagons stand at the ready. And now we can bring on a the few more heroes. So, basically, at the minute, I'm going to bring on two at a time. I think so. A Vestal is very, very good. A sister of battle, pious. Vestal is going to mean that we can. Um, that we can heal up a bit better, which is really, really nice. And then we've got we've got a difficult choice here. I don't want to take on too many heroes at once, just because um, just because I don't want to overdo how many stories we have to write, how many backstories we've got going on. But at the same time, I want to bring people on early, so the Abbey calls to the faithful. I might bring on a few more people here. Um Antiquarian is really a fun class that's, that's, that's quite good. Um, she can be a little bit tricky to play, but she allows you to bring more loot back with you. She increases the stacks that you get, and she finds 
specific types of extra loot, which can be really, really nice. So Antiquarian is a fun one to have. She is rather fragile, though, with only 17 max HP. She needs to be kind of protected and looked after quite a lot. So she is a risky one to grab early. The Thrall is our first modded class. Um, this guy is uh, quite a quite a crazy dude. Basically, he's all about just brutal, brutal damage. So, a very fun one indeed. Um, starting out with a, a fairly interesting set of um, set of abilities here. This is definitely a tricky one. Right, one moment. Okay, I'm going to say that we should bring on the Antiquarian and the Thrall. Just because I, I, I think those could be potentially quite an interesting pairing. I do like the Hellion as well. The Hellion is definitely a fun one. But um, I, as I said, I don't want to bring on too many people at once. And we already have seven. Uh, what we could do here is we could go and give Arashad a little bit of stress relief. So for 500, we can put him in here. And that will relieve some of his stress. Um, and then once we unlock it, the sanitarium, we can use that to get rid of some of these negative quirks, such as um, artistic. I think we probably want to get rid of that as soon as possible because that could spell trouble for us. But yeah, we do have a few new heroes here. So these people do need backstories writing for them. So please do let me know in the comments or join the Discord and I'll add you to the Darkest Dungeon channel. If you'd like to write for the Vestal, give them a name, the um, Antiquarian or the Thrall. Um, there is some people in the Discord that are already writing stories and stuff, so it's best to join there so we can talk about it and see who wants to write for who and make sure everyone gets equal opportunity to try this out because it's going to be a lot of fun if you guys get to get to give this a go. Um, in general, episodes will tend to be a little bit longer than this um, from now on. This one's just going to be a little bit shorter because... Um, we don't, like, we, I just wanted to go through sort of the tutorial phase of this episode and introduce the series, so to say, so you guys understand what we're trying to do um, and what we're going for. But I think we've definitely achieved that. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at what we've got here. So the 3% extra melee skill is really nice. Um, the crit chance. Fragile isn't amazing, but it's only 10%. Antiquarian... Um, Less less accuracy and crit versus blight. It isn't great because she does have a blight skill, I think. Um, yeah, the festering vapors. With this character, we're probably going to be um, we're probably going to be doing this, the flash powder, as well as the fortifying vapors, um, in order to keep everyone um, healed up. But obviously, healing of one isn't exactly crazy. So really, we'd like to unlock the invigorating vapors to buff everyone's dodge. Uh, we're definitely going to be want to be wanting to be buffing her dodge as well to try and make sure. Two speed and five crit in position one's pretty nice there, and then finally we have the Vestal, who has accuracy and crit below certain HP, increased restoration received from the cook skills. That's really good because the cook character is going to be quite nice for us. And then we also have the uh, extra stress in the curve. We do also have multiple costumes for this character as well, including one alternate, which is this one here. This is uh, one from, I believe it's Dark Souls. So if you want to tell me which one you'd like, there's multiple different colors. You can basically just say a color, and if that color applies, I will. And then we'll change the name, read the backstories at the start of the next episode, and we'll get right into it. Either way... I hope you guys have enjoyed this first episode of Darkest Dungeon. I really, really hope that you guys that are watching get involved with the series and we can keep this going because this is a series that I really have a lot of passion for. Um, I think it could be a really, really fun journey for all of us to go on, especially if we get quite a few writers into the mix. Like I said, we already have a good few, but more the merrier always. I really, really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode.